what you are saying is three ways first is that like how prabhupad's vision is something which we can see vindicated or confirmed even in today's crisis situation hmm? and that was the last point you made and the latest yeah. point you made before that you also said that we discussed about how prabhu what success we have achieved over here that may be measured in one way from the awards that people have got but another way we can measure it is that just that we were self sufficient over here so that's also another way of looking at the success and overall then how we are successful and uh, how the current situation is unsustainable for that you give some background about i like that hierarchy of need comforts luxuries then prestige and then uh, then greed so needs and comforts can come through nature without much effort but then when it, when it becomes excessive then it becomes a problem yes bro this is and this is solid grounding you have given us so were you always in, interested in say environmental consciousness or was this something which was sparked off after reading prabhupad's books or because like you mentioned even before this govardhan eco village project in the down project you were you were one of the pioneers so how did you get involved in this whole field actually uh, because of my law background uh, maharaj wanted me to look for the land and actually maharaj wanted this land when i joined in 1988 89 i remember like you no know, used to go and see few pieces of land but we are not satisfied with that and then later on i got the services of taking care of uh, Uh, in chopati we had uh, uh, orphanage and uh, i was given the responsibility of handling the children's hmm. and then as i was taking care of the children's i saw like you know, i thought let me visit to their homes and many of the children's were coming from village background because i was born and brought up in bombay so i did not know anything about farming i could not even understand it's uh, how the rice plant looks like and how the wheat plant looks like so i <clears throat> then during the vacation time i started visiting the children's home visiting the some of the parents and villages and that's how first i came in contact with the villages and then some other got attracted to this village lifestyle and at the same time as you reach the prabhupad books you can clearly see like prabhupad wanted farm communities very much and then he was always talked about that how this uh industrial growth or the current way of living will not actually give the satisfaction so then uh, we located the land uh, in down after so located in the land, late 90s uh 99 Okay, I think this India, was the time when the Y two K was also a matter of concern, na? No? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So that so one of the reason that uh, prompted us to go for this project, and then we started living there on the land. Then I started understanding now how we should do the agriculture, and uh, how I understood is. the first person then i started like you know, let me go and see who are doing agriculture in an organic way or in a natural way so the first uh, so i started visiting the different farmers uh, fields and started understanding how they are doing things so the very first farmer i went is a very famous uh, internationally famous natural farmer very close to our farm here in wada about 100 kilometers north of our land and the first thing he taught taught me is the weeds actually give the wealth because what happens is like nowadays you will see in conventional agriculture weeds are considered as a nuisance and that is why all the weedicides and herbicides have come and these are like you no know, polluting all over the land water and air and is one of the major cause of different kinds of diseases in the world oh. so what modern science and what modern uh, uh, way of thinking conventional way of thinking was thinking that uh, the weeds are actually harmful 
whereas this person was saying actually it is the wealth so how i so like na so it's a weed weed that grows you cut it and give as a fodder to the cows at the same time like na different kinds of weeds are good greens like na you can make a very good vegetables which are medicinal in uh, varieties medicinal varieties of uh, green vegetables are available in that so it's a very good food for the human being very good food for the uh, cows at the same time it will give a good ground cover now you see you are sitting in the room right hmm and then if you just go out and stand in the sun how long you can stand in the sun it's, un- it's too hot we can't for very long uh, for 5 minutes at the most you will stand in and guess immediately you will come in the shade and you are such a like you know, we are uh, grown up human beings and in the land there are so much like the you know, microorganisms are working they need some shelter to work under so this that's how the nature has made this green cover in the form of a weed which can easily grow and cover the mother earth and so many microorganisms <coughs> grow in that oh okay so the natural system the conventional farming say like na you destroy it oh so by conventional you are not referring to traditional conventional means what is considered the convention right now in the world yes what right the mainstream now. we could say okay mainstream okay mainstream uh, agriculture okay so is this true yes. for all weeds because i've also read about say how sometimes some pests come and attack and they destroy the whole farms so is it that we can't really means many things which may consider undesirable they're not as undesirable but it's not that all is of that... nature is benevolent there are aspects of nature which are also which are also dangerous and we need to counter them isn't it this is what exactly what i am trying to say okay that nature is a perfect in itself what is the shloka of uh, oh purnamada uh, purnamidam ah uh, so if this world has come from the complete perfect it is going to and problem is human interference because of the excess greed we make human interference and that's why the problem happens now you take the example of forest for thousands of year the forest are maintained if the pest comes if there is no natural arrangement to counteract that then forest would have been destroyed long back isn't it as a simple common sense that means nature has made perfect arrangement to take care of it itself and that's why we find that the uh, forest and all this ecosystem is surviving for thousands of years can Now, i play, the, can i play the devil's advocate here yeah, and why let's see let me complete this yeah, please yeah and uh, what is the problem is that because of the greed we try to uh, take more so once you spray chemical this things all the good pest and the bad pest both gets destroyed okay and ecosystem gets lost because always like the, there are like some insect that will eat the plants there are some insects which are non vegetarians they will in, eat that pest so nature has created perfect balance for that for when you um, spray the chemicals the natural balance is uh, affected 